No, I don't waste no time. What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketing online coach. And in this video, I just want to give you a few little tips and tricks um, on how to basically close more deals and, you know, basically close more clients for your social media marketing agency. And the first thing I want to mention before we actually start this video, and this is something that uh, Brandon C has taught me, which he is a, a high ticket closer. And for those of you that don't know, I have my own coaching program where I basically teach you guys, you know, how to start your own agency, how to get your first clients, how to get multiple clients, how to build up the agency, automate it, scale it so that you two can live life on your own terms. And with the coaching, every single Sunday I go live within like the mastermind group. Um, every Sunday, you know, I'll explain various topics on outreach, sales, project management, project development, how to get results for the clients, how to run the Facebook ads for the clients, and so on and so forth. And every now and again, we'll also have a guest speaker on board, and a few weeks back, we had uh, Brandon C, who is, like I said, a high-ticket closer, and he did a sort of guest lecture on sales. And what he mentioned in that call is something that has stuck by me, and the more I think about it, the more, you know, the more sense it makes, basically. And he, he says, help winners win more. And what he means by that is that you're not trying to pitch or go after these startups, people that have a small budget, people that are just starting out. Why? Because these clients are going to be an absolute pain to work with. They're going to micromanage every step of the way. They want to know how every single penny is being spent you know, for their business. And it's just overall, they are just very impatient and they are not willing to you know, wait it out. They're not willing to invest into the business into the long term and of course you know this is i'm speaking for the majority of these businesses there will always be a percentage that are in it for the right reasons that do have the patience and do trust the process and basically the way he mentions it is uh, he basically uses his own hand and arm for this he basically says you know this is the j curve of you know how successful businesses are being run a lot of businesses you know start out well all the businesses start out here then this is what he calls the valley of death you know uh, a lot of businesses will get stranded here they won't actually make this you know as you can see it's um, in terms of growth limited growth takes a very long amount of time to actually you know make some kind of progress with the business and what he basically says was um, you need to start targeting businesses that are here and what you're trying to do is you're trying to get these businesses in just before that jcav and then help them get to that jcav so it helped them basically scale their business you know they've already experienced the value of death they've made all the mistakes they've had to make they've made all you know they've uh, the pivots etc they've got the data and now all they need to do is go move forward you know scale that business get more clients in and so on and so forth and at the start of that j curve or you know, just before the end of the, uh, the valley of death they have no data they have no idea who their customer uh, you know what their customer avatar looks like what is their their audience you know the, the buyer's audience what countries are the most conveying countries etc the landing page has never been tested before in their life their e-com store is unproven and so on and so forth so what he basically says was you're helping winners win more so people that have already gone through that valley of death you're helping them scale their business and it is much easier to actually help those businesses, even though you might think, well, if I help a business start out, there's not much that I can do wrong because every single click and every single like that they get on their page and on their website is one more that they had that they didn't have prior to that. And yes, you know, that is true, but it's so much easier to help someone that already has an established business go to that next level. And like I said, you know, if a company already has a return on ad spend of uh, let's say two to three and spend about 5k a month it's much easier to scale that to get them a three to four return ad spend with a 10k uh, budget you know as opposed to someone that only has 500 to spend helping them trying to get their first purchase on a, a web shop that isn't proven with products that aren't proven either so uh, that is just one thing that i want to mention before we even go into the sales um you need to look for businesses um, that are already winning and you are helping them win more okay then prior to the call um you know obviously there's a back and forth um either that you've sent a loom video or anything like that and then what i basically mentioned is that 
I've got a few more ideas, um, you know, whether that is through a Loom video or anything like that. And I say, I've got a few more ideas, let's hop on a call and discuss. And then when, I, when I'm on the call, I set the agenda from minute one. So basically what I say on the call is, okay, um, welcome, you know, whoever it is. Uh, this is how the call is gonna go. I'm gonna ask you a few questions about your business. Uh, we're gonna run through your numbers. And if I think I can help you, then I will explain what I do and we can see how we can potentially move forward together with this. Does that sound fair enough? And what you're doing right there, you know, some might say, no, you know, that, that's not my personality. That sounds too cocky, etc. But what you're doing is you're making them understand that, okay, you're in charge of the sales call. You know, it's not some kind of... Um, you know, a like job interview, which some people also, um, you know, get mistaken for. They'll they'll hop on the call and they'll be asked like to pre present their CV, and they you know they come to me and ask like, why is this guy? You know, is this guy crazy? He thinks that I'm trying to apply for a job, and I always think, well, how have you positioned yourself in that call for him to think that you're actually applying for a job? Same goes for when you get the question, well, can you show me, um, you know, a portfolio? Can you show me what your prior experience is? What has triggered that question for the client you know what has made that client um, question your abilities with social media marketing in such a way that he wants to see proof that you can actually do it so you need to think why is he asking me that this question or why is he thinking that you know about this certain angle of the conversation so from minute one you set the agenda and you also specify what the goal of the call is and by saying that you're gonna ask them some questions and dive through the numbers or you know go delve into the numbers, the clients will be much more at ease when you ask them questions like, what is your current profit margin? Where do you want to go in terms of the business? Where do you want to scale to? What are your financial goals? What is your um, you know revenue on you know a monthly basis and so on and so forth? Because he knows you know that was part of the agreement. The agenda was he's gonna ask me some questions, he's gonna ask me some questions regarding the financials, and then if he thinks he can come in and do a better job, he is going to explain um, what he can do for me. Okay, so that is what you're trying to achieve with that call. And then like I said, you know, if they, um, if, if, if you do ask the, the client uh, how much you are making, they understand, okay, it's just all part of the process. And yes, you know, it is an awkward question, it's not the, the easiest question to ask, um, especially for example, where I'm from in the Netherlands, we don't really like talking about financials. It's not something that people feel very comfortable with. If you walk up to you know someone on the street or someone in a bar and say, how much you know do you earn per month? They will look at you in a weird way and say like, that, that's private. That's something that I don't discuss. And even some of my closest friends, they still don't disclose how much they earn. Um, and that is not because they don't trust me or anything like that. It's just because it's not part of the culture. and. Like I said, you know, in a lot of cultures, that is that that is a thing. You know, you don't really talk about money. Um, however, you do need to get over this hurdle because how can you help a client if you don't know how much he's making? You know, it's like um, you going into a doctor, you know, for a doctor's appointment, and he not knowing what you know what your problem is, so he can't actually prescribe some kind of uh, medicine or you know something to actually help ease the pain because he doesn't know where the pain is. Okay, so that is the way you need to look at it. You need to know how much they are earning, what their profit margin is, and where they want to go. Then if you feel confident enough that you can actually achieve that and help them achieve that, then obviously you can come in and explain what you do. Now, another very, very important thing I wanna mention here is the retainer, because um, it's not only the retainer that they are investing into you, right? It's also the ad spend. So if a company is making, like, like I said, 5,000 a month, then um, you know, it's, it's going to be very hard for you to prove to the company that you are worth a 2,000 retainer. Because just because they are making 5,000 a month doesn't mean that that is their profit margin. Plus, if your retainer is 2,000 and they put an extra 2,000 into ads, now, that is an investment of 4,000 every single month. You know, that's, um, my math's absolutely awful, and that's like over 80% of their uh, monthly income is spent and invested into you. Because even though you do not pay for the ads, you're still responsible for that budget, okay? So when you are discussing the retainer, there's a few things you need to take into consideration and a few things to understand as well. First thing is that, okay, how much they are making per month does not mean profit. So you can ask them about their revenue and you can ask them what their profit margin is, but you need to work out for yourself, okay, um, this company is making 20K a month. Um, their profit margin 
pay a product, etc. I don't know, is 50%. So again, that's that's immediately that is 10k. So they're only making 10k a month. Then what you need to figure out is okay, how much are they spending on ads? Um, how much are they reinvesting back into their business? And then from there, only then can you actually think to yourself, okay, what is a feasible retainer to ask, and what is a realistic retainer to ask? So the way I like to structure this is um, something that. Um, was taught to me by Isaac Marley, who is another digital marketer uh, who is based in Australia. And we both basically started social media marketing around the same time. And basically what he told me was always try and aim for a 2x return on investment for your clients. He said, because if you are, if you are literally doubling their money, there is no reason why they will leave you. And it's true. You know, If you make your uh, clients more money than they are invested into it, there is literally no reason for them to leave. So with that in mind, you need to think to yourself, okay, what is the ad budget? What is their profit margin? And how can I get them a return on investment of two with a you know retainer that I am happy with? So for example, you know, if they are making 20k a month, they are um like I said the profit margin is 50%. So I'm the, the 10 to 10k that they make profit, they put back into ads. So they've got a, a 10k ad budget. Your retainer is, let's say, your retainer is 1k, which is 11. So they are investing 11k into ads. You want to get them a return on investment of two. So that means that they need to be making 22k uh, back for that to be a 100% return on investment. So I hope you know you guys understand what I mean by that. So yes, you know they might be making 10k a month, but that does not mean that that is what they are um, actually in or actually taking home. So always understand what their uh, profit margins are understand how much they are also investing into ads and then from there how can you get them a 2x return on investment and then you know you can sort of work out what your retainer is if you want me to do another video on retainers etc just let me know in the comments down below um, because I, I do think it's a very interesting subject and yes all the gurus say you always need to go for 2,000 3,000 a month but sometimes it's just not feasible for that business and you might actually be ruining the relationship by going in too high from the start as opposed to you know starting with a sensible retainer and growing with that business okay so uh, with that said there's a few more things that I want to mention before we wrap up this video and that is the question about the portfolio about prior experience about um, testimonials and so on and so forth because again you know this is a question that does get asked a lot and when a client asks you for a portfolio or some kind of case study of previous results the best way around that if you haven't got that is by saying okay you know that's fine I can send that over after the call but I do want to mention that what worked back then doesn't necessarily work now and what uh, got results for a client in the past might not necessarily work for you so what I would like to suggest is that um, I create a plan that is tailored towards your business and the way we can do that is by you giving me analyst access to your ad account I can go through the data I can make you an accurate plan of what I would do if I were to take over the ads from then uh, I'll present that to you in either a second call or a loom video if you know you do not feel confident in my abilities to get you results with Facebook ads then no hard feelings we will uh, part ways you know from here if you do see that I am the right person for the job then we can discuss moving forward from there and by saying that you're basically overcoming the question of okay well I want to see what you've done with other clients and you're basically proposing them something that is much more enticing to them because you are going to create a plan that is specific to uh, you know their business and you also get analyst access to their um, business manager and ad accounts which is also like a foot in the door as well because it's harder for them to ignore you to drop off etc if you've got access to their assets okay so it's like the foot in the, foot in the door approach um, if you will and then from there you can just analyze what they're currently doing look at their you know metrics etc and then if you think you can do a better job then obviously you know propose that and see if you can um you know basically come to an agreement in terms of the retainer etc and uh, help that business forward because that is what we're trying to do at the end of the day yes you know we are making good money with this you know with social media marketing is a very profitable and lucrative business model to be in but at the end of the day you know we are also helping businesses move forward and i truly believe that if you cannot help that business then you are just going to ruin the relationship more than the money is worth it you know in the short term so 
that is just my little two cents on that. But anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Leave a comment down below if you've got any more sales tips for those that of you that are, you know, for others that are just starting out and just want a bit more um, feedback on how they need to structure the call, etc. Subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you all in the next video.